Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of recurrence relations. In this video lecture, I shall be solving a very important relation known as Fibonacci relation. First of all, let us see what is a Fibonacci sequence. It appears in this format 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. These are how the numbers appear in a Fibonacci sequence. Observe it carefully that from number 2 onwards, every number is the addition of the previous two numbers. That is 2 itself is the addition of 1 and 1. Then 3 is the addition of 1 and 2. 5 is addition of 2 and 3. 8 is addition of 3 and 5. And so on the pattern follows. So the recurrence relation that we obtain from the Fibonacci sequence is nothing but a n is equals to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 with the initial condition given to us is a1 equals to 1 and a2 equals to 2. Okay, so we are asked to solve this recurrence relation using generating function. So let us see how to solve. Consider the uh, recurrence relation. Plug up n equal to 2 in this recurrence relation. We obtain a2 equals to a1 plus a0. So further, when you solve for a0, you obtain a0 as 1. So now our initial condition become a0 equal to 1 and a1 equal to 1. Okay, so that is what you can see the starting term is 1 and then you have the next term as 1. So that is how it is going to oh, oh, like going parallel with the example that you can see in front of you. Okay. Now let us start solving using generating function to find the nth term formula for this sequence of Fibonacci. So let us see how to solve. Take the generating function formula as a step 1. Okay, You define the generating function. Then you consider the recurrence relation and then you multiply x to the power n on both the sides. You obtain this. Okay, Now in the recurrence relation you observe that the smallest suffix is n minus 2. So when you take the summation you have to take care of the limits and apply the limits throughout. When you apply the limits throughout, it will be n equal to 2 to infinity, the summation would run over. Okay, So, we now perform a manipulation in order to establish g of x. We pull x from the first summation outside and we pull x square from the second summation outside. So, what we are left with the power of x will be x to the power n inside the summation side. And over here in the second summation on the RHS, we will be left with x to the power n minus 2 over here. Okay, When you take x square outside. Now, we observe that LHS is nothing but g of x minus a0 minus a1 of x. Right? Okay. We have seen such a uh, manipulation in the previous problem. Now, we have to establish g of x using appropriate adjustments. So once we do that, we will obtain the value for, uh, we will obtain an expression for g of x. So let us see how. Uh, in this first term, what you do in the RHS is that you put n minus 1 equals to m. So when you put n minus 1 equal to m, you obtain the limits for m that go from 1 to infinity. Okay, because when n starts from 2, m will become 1. Right? You put n equal to 2, it will become m will become 1 over here, 2 minus 1. Right? And similar uh, adjustment you do for the second summation that is put n minus 2 equal to k, you obtain the limits of k going from 0 to infinity. So finally, what you obtain your expression here, LHS was nothing but g of x minus a0 minus a1 of x. This summation got converted from uh, n going from 2 to infinity as m going from 1 to infinity as am times x to the power m. And for this one, the change happen is k going from 0 to infinity, ak x to the power k, right? Now, Observe this, this is nothing but another form of g of x, that is nothing but g of x minus a0, right? And this is exactly g of x, okay. 
so now you solve for g of x you obtain g of x times 1 minus x minus x square is equals to 1 minus x plus x which is nothing but g of x is equals to 1 upon 1 minus x minus x square now this is a, a expression that you get i'll try to write in a better way where uh, i pull out the minus sign from the denominator and shift it into the numerator because i'm doing this because we are used to see this kind of quadratics rather than this one okay so this is very important manipulation that's why i'm putting a star over here now consider the quadratic in the denominator over here and i'm trying to write its factors so its factors are going to be x plus 1 plus root 5 by 2 times x plus 1 minus root 5 by 2 irrational numbers are the roots for this quadratic equation now let us write this g of x in this format i'm just neglecting the minus sign for some time and i'm calling it as this expression h of x equals to 1 upon x square plus x minus 1 and this quadratic has these factors okay so i can write in in this manner now furthermore i am going to let this irrational number the first number 1 plus root 5 by 2 as r1 and the second one as r2 okay now i also note the fact about them that r1 plus r2 when i add them i get 1 and when i multiply these two i get minus 1 moreover i note the fact that r1 is nothing but minus of 1 times r2 and r2 is nothing but minus of 1 times r1 also we observe here that h of x and g of x there is some relation it is nothing but g of x is minus of h of x that minus sign that we had neglected now we will have to take it into the picture so g of x is nothing but minus of h of x okay having settled with this important observations let us go further we are now going to write the partial fraction for h of x so when you try to write the partial fraction of h of x over here because these are distinct roots you put or the value for x okay of negative of each of r1 and r2 you will get b equal to 1 by root 5 and a you get as minus of 1 by root 5 so when you write the partial fraction you get h of x equals to minus of 1 upon root 5 times x plus now this first root we had denoted it by r1 so i'm writing it as r1 the second root that we had denoted it by r2 so i'm writing it as r2 and the coefficient b that you obtain is nothing but 1 upon root 5 that is what i have written over here okay now i can write them in this manner because it is addition and addition is commutative so i can write it as r1 plus x and r2 plus x it does not make any difference right okay now here is an important step again I am going to pull R1 outside the bracket. When I pull R1 outside the bracket, what I get inside the bracket is that 1 plus x upon R1. And when I pull R2 outside in the denominator, I obtain 1 plus x upon R2. And what I have done is I have taken 1 upon root 5 common from each of the terms. Okay, now this is another important step since there is a multiplication of these two terms over here i can write it over here in this manner minus of 1 upon r1 times 1 upon these this first bracket plus 1 upon r2 times 1 upon the second bracket 1 plus x upon r2 okay now we make the uh, observation that we had done r1 is nothing but minus of 1 upon r2 and r2 is nothing but minus of 1 upon r1 so i'm going to use them over here now this minus of r 1 upon r1 i will write it as r2 and this one x upon r1 will be written as minus of r2 times x okay the 
this second term over here 1 upon r2 i can write it as uh, 1 upon r2 will be nothing but minus of r1 you just shift this minus sign on the other side so you get minus of r1 and over here that is 1 upon r2 can be written as minus of r1 over here and you have x that is multiplied okay now for each of these terms inside the bracket okay what i can see is it is of the form 1 upon 1 minus x and the this is also of the same form right so what i can write is that i can write their summations which is nothing but summation r2 to the power n times x to the power n where n goes from 0 to infinity and for the second one it will be r1 to the power n times x to the power n summation going from 0 to infinity right n runs from 0 to infinity that is what the expansion of 1 upon 1 minus x look like right okay now what i am going to do i will call this step also very important because from the compact form we are moving to the summation okay so i will put a star over here now i am going to shift this r2 inside the summation because it's just a constant and for the same r1 will be shifted inside the summation so what I get is this, that is summation r2 to the power n plus 1 times x to the power n and r1 to the power n plus 1 times x to the power n in the second one. Okay, observe here, x to the power n is same, summation has also the same limits. So what I can do, I can take summation common, I will push 1 by root 5 inside the summation sign, okay and this is what I get. Now, this calls me like to tell you that this term 1 upon root 5 times r2 to the power n plus 1 minus r1 to the power n plus 1 is nothing but the coefficient of x to the power n. Okay, so we are almost near to the completion of the problem. So, we note the fact that g of x is nothing but minus of h of x, right? So, this expression h of x is here and I am writing g of x as minus times this summation entirely. I will push this minus sign inside the summation. So, I obtain these terms get swapped, right? So, summation 1 upon root 5 times r1 to the power n plus 1 minus r2 to the power n plus 1 that is what i get okay now finally i write r1 and r2 as whatever uh, the so, uh, the irrational numbers that we had obtained that is r1 was nothing but 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 minus r2 was is nothing but 1 minus root 5 divided by 2 right so that is the values of r1 and r2 being plugged up over there okay we have obtained g of x remember that our goal was to find the nth term for the sequence of the recurrence uh, for the fibonacci uh, sequence right and we that is what we are finding the general formula for the recurrence relation in an uh, over there from the beginning of the topic so we have found finally the an term for the Fibonacci sequence, the general formula that is nothing but 1 upon root 5 times 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 up minus uh, of 1 minus root 5 divided by 2 to the power n plus 1. So, this is the formula. Okay, the problem is quite lengthy. There are a lot many notations in it. Please go through it carefully and try to understand each step wherever I have put star because it is important and it is non-trivial at times to understand. So, please go through the entire problems once more and then you can practice these two problems for generating functions. Okay, now what I would like to tell you quickly is that all the problems that you have seen you can solve by generating functions method and uh, you can solve these two problems also if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section 
Till then, keep solving good amount of mathematics. Thank you.